good morning everyone so students today in our social science history class we are going to discuss the rest of the subunits from chapter 6 and the name of the subunit is upanishads and jainism so previous class i have given you some idea about the upanishads now today i will discuss it in brief and also the another subunit is the jainism and it is Uh, present in your page number so anyone tell me what is the page number in a new book because i have a old book okay so those have new books then tell me the page number okay so it is page number 59 thank you it is page number Okay students can you uh, see the board clearly mention in the chat box yes okay so what is upanishad so previous class i have already discussed what is upanishad upanishad are described described by some thinkers and also wanted to know about the some people some thinkers uh, before 200 years of the birth of gautam buddha they wanted to know about the life after death and why sacrifices should be performed this type of questions also arise in their mind about the universe all these things so these uh, thinkers felt that after so many discussions and realization through meditation and yoga so they understood that something permanent in the universe and would last even after the death so they describe these things as atma or individual soul so atman or atma that is thing that is present in everything every living thing either it is in the plants the animals human beings everything and they also believed in another soul that is the universal soul or brahmo so they believed both atma and brahmo are the same and the motto of the uh, the every atma should be merged with the universal soul or brahma okay and they believed that the universal soul or the brahma is formless and without and it is formless so you cannot 
describe it because you cannot see this see that soul but he was present and he was eternal so when he was uh, try and uh, wanted to split in many souls then all the individual souls all the universe planets the stars the everything created so upanishads literally mean the approaching and sitting near so the actual meaning in uh, of the upanishads means upanishad means approaching and sitting near what brahma or truth approaching and sitting near the truth this is the literally meaning of upanishad this is the sanskrit word and the text contains the conversation between the teachers and students and in question answer manner all these verses written uh, verses mentioned in upanishad at the time the upanishads were not written they were spoken by the gurus or the teachers towards their shishya or the students and in this manner in guru shishya traditions or teacher student traditions through thousand years it uh, passed by the people uh, one by one okay one after one and later all these things all these upanishadic text printed just few hundred years ago in the same as the vedas you know that vedas were printed first 200 years ago these are the vedic texts also remembered by the people through the guru shishya or teacher student tradition so most upanishadic thinkers were brahmin at the time brahmin and rajas those usually think and discussed all this philosophy okay but some women thinkers also present you know that women were not allowed to read vedas in some in later vedic age but at the time women thinkers also they think and discussed about this upanishad upanishadic philosophy and ideas and such as the gargi maitri opala these are some renowned female thinkers at the time and they were famous for their learning their great knowledge about this upanishad and vedas and also they usually held debates in front of the king in their courts okay slaves and shudras they were also not allowed to read these things but because they mainly their occupation was to was heavy work and physical work but some of them also had a deep desire to learn about the reality or the truth so such as the satyakam jawala the satyakam jawala is the son of a slave women and the mother name is jawala so satyakam was accepted as a student by a upanishadic by an upanishadic thinker named maharshi gautama so maharshi gautama also teach satyakam about the truth about this universal and individual soul and about this upanishad so later shankara charya shankara charya the famous upanishadic thinker also developed many ideas that was written today in upanishad and the post of shankara charya it was made a prestigious title and post and to today also the post held by some renowned thinkers in india okay so this is upanishad so students i hope you have understood the idea of upanishad so if you have any question from upanishad you can ask me okay
then the next one i am discussing now the next subunit it is the jainism the jainism is also another contemporary religion that was emerged or philosophy that was emerged in that time 2400 years ago the 24th tirthankar who was most famous among their 24th the bardhaman mahavir so bardhaman mahavir also spread the message around this time about the new thinking he and before mahavir there was 24 tirthankar and uh, among them the first one named rishabdev and 23rd is parshanath so various inscription history historians also found the name of this two tirthankars or the preacher of jainism so 2500 years ago also a uh, vardhaman mahavir born in today's uh, in uh, vajji gana sangha he was born in a lichabi gana a lichabi was the ruling group of the vajji gana sangha you know what is gana sangha and about the vajji in previous chapters and he was also and this lichabi gana sangha lichabis also a kshatriya clan so mahavir bardhavan also born like buddha in a kshatriya clan and like and as a kshatriya prince but he also realized all this levish lifestyle and earthly possessions these are not effective so in search of truth at the age of 30 he left home and went to live in the forest and for 12 years he had a hard and lonely life he meditated lonely for 12 years and at the end of which he attained enlightenment like buddha so mahavir bardhaman also attained enlightenment in this way so he taught a simple doctrine so what are the messages and Uh, the teachings of mahavir bardhaman that men and women who wish to know the truth must leave their homes so as per mahavir if you want to know the truth you wanted to know the truth so you have to leave the homes men and women as per the mahavir because, because uh, in homes the people are busy in their daily lives and all these things and which cannot release them okay and cannot give them that much of mental peace that they can go for the search of knowledge search for the truth so he also taught they must follow very strict strictly the rules of ahimsa and also the, he said that the people who following him should be uh, should very strict about the should be very strict about the philosophy of ahimsa means non violence and he means not hurting or killing living beings for your own gain and living beings means all beings he also said long to live to all things life is dear he believed that everything has life so that's why it was our duty uh, so the human being should not kill or hurt other animals even some jaina monks they also wear some kind of masks to protect to they believe that when they speak some uh, bacteria and microbes they also died so that's why they strictly maintain the rule of ahimsa or non violence so ordinary people could understand the teachings of mahavira and his followers because they also used to speak in prakrit language and prakrit is the spoken form of sanskrit that was used 2500 years ago in northern india and 
there were several forms of prakrit and used in different parts of the country and named after the region in which they were used okay for example the prakrit language spoken in magadha region known as magadhi and uh, another surprising information i'll give you that the bengali bhojpuri and uh, the maithili those languages also emerged from magadhi language okay due to thousand of years they changed and transformed into these different different languages okay and the for followers of mahavir who were known as jainas okay because he uh, got the mahavir he got enlightenment and it is called jin and the jainas had to lead very simple lives begging for food the jaina monks usually begging for uh, food such as the buddhist monks also they had to be absolutely honest on everything and were especially asked not to steal stealing is prohibited and strictly prohibited in jainism and also they had to observe uh, celibacy and men had to give up everything including their clothes so these rules are strictly uh, rules the giving of clothes are for the monks the common jains are not following this things okay later on i'll tell you in the next class how did the jainas also divided into two groups and one group they uh, um they and these groups believing in different different ideology okay so student that's all from today's class next day i will di discuss in detail about the jainism as well as the exercise question answers those are related to this three sub units so remember in your upcoming pt2 examination these three sub units will come only okay from this chapter 6 new questions and ideas rest of the part will not come and before ending the class i am tell you the story of kisha gotami it is not in your syllabus but to understand the teachings of buddha that one day what happened in the story that once there was a woman named kisha gotami and whose son had died and she was so sad that she roamed through the streets of the city carrying the child with her asking for help to bring him back to life and suddenly a kind man informed her that she must took her son to buddha buddha has some magical power so the buddha when uh, the lady took her child to buddha buddha said bring me a handful of mustard seeds and i will bring your child back to life so buddha said okay i will bring life to your child but at first you bring me a handful of mustard seeds it will be uh, necessary for the ritual and i will bring your child back to life so kisagatami was very much overjoyed and excited and started off at once but the buddha gently stopped her and added that the seeds must be from the house of a family where nobody had died nobody has died so then kisa gotami little bit in confusion but kisa gotami went from door to door but wherever she went she found out that someone or the other had died in that particular family that father mother sister brother husband wife child uncle aunt grandfather grandmother had died once so no house was there where someone is uh someone is still alive okay and immortal he have not found a, a home where immortal persons live so that's why so finally he came to buddha and understood the truth of life that death is inevitable the man is mortal okay so this is the true story uh, actually uh, this is a story 
mentioned uh, also in Buddhist texts about the Kisha Gotami. So through this story and through this uh, message, uh, the Buddha said that the death is inevitable. So we should uh, made, uh, believe in Majjhim Pantha and Middle Path. So to avoid the avoid the karma which will give us the next but okay students so that is the that's all from today's class so next day i'll give you the rest uh, the question answers related to this topic and the rest of the part of jainism thank you